Are you being gouged at the supermarket? Well, Vice President Harris thinks you are, and she's put as one of the planks of her coming campaign and her future presidency, she hopes that she's going to go after these price-gouging grocers. I'm Scott Ott with Bill Whittle and Stephen Green. This episode of Right Angles brought to you by the members at BillWhittle.com. And gentlemen, I think we've talked about this idea of price gouging before in the context of natural disasters and situations where suddenly, you know, bottled water and gasoline, for example, spike in price because of the shortage of, you know, basically of supply and the increase in demand. Um, but this is fascinating that somebody is trying to build a presidential campaign upon something that we thought had been tried and failed during the Nixon administration. Uh, Stephen Green, uh, they insist that they're not talking about price controls here. And the legislation, which I believe was in, initially introduced uh, by Elizabeth Warren, and now uh, Vice President Harris is kind of jumping on the, uh, the war wagon with I mean, the bandwagon with um, uh, Mrs. Warren um, is basically that the government would go after companies that um, – greedy companies that jack up prices and take advantage of poor people who are just trying to buy eggs and butter and cheese and such. Um, but, Steve, it's a really difficult thing to do, it seems to me, in a free market – to be the high price vendor, especially of a commodity, for very long. Uh, do you think that this is more uh, just campaign rhetoric that she has no intention of implementing? Or do you really think that, uh, that a future President Harris might enjoy a Nixonian uh, price control regimen? Yeah, Nixon said that uh, when he imposed, after he had imposed wage and price controls, he said after he was out of office, it was the stupidest thing he ever did. And well, I've got, I've got a list yeah. of stupid things that Nixon did. We can go with the EPA and uh, uh, price controls and uh, taking us off the gold standard. There's there's a list. Uh, that said, God help us if Harris is is earnest about price controls. Uh, you know, it, it it starts with. The shelves going bare slowly and then quickly, and the next thing you know, you're going full Venezuela and eating zoo animals. This is this is no exaggeration. This is so you see this as a tantamount to price controls when she says she's going to go after price gougers. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, it is. Um, in fact, uh, when asked about it, uh, one of her campaign surrogates, a congressman from I can't remember which state, was on one of the Sunday shows, not one of the big Sunday shows, it was the Hills. Sunday show, uh, was already backtracking on this. So I don't think she means it, but you never know because the government has to deflect from its mistakes. Inflation is a government created problem, period. There's no way for the private sector to create inflation because the government controls the printing presses. And, and all inflation is, is when the money supply increases faster than the productivity of goods and services in a country. That's it. That's all it is. Um, so does she mean it? I, I, I really can't say, but God, God help us if, if she does. Uh, the thing is, supermarkets have a, uh, an average profit margin of 1.8%. And considering the, the incredibly valuable service they provide, they sell us the food we need to live. Uh, a 1.8% return is pretty, pretty shoddy, Scott. Uh, honestly, I think they should be making more money than that. That said, um, I'll give you an example. You mentioned eggs. Here in Colorado, eggs cost more than they do in most places across the nation, not because of inflation, but because of another government uh, thrill of mine, which is overregulation. Uh, we've got, courtesy of the Democrats who, who have taken over my state, the Denver-Boulder axis, uh, we have the some of the strictest regulations on raising chickens and eggs anywhere in the country. Basically, chickens have to be given, each one of them, a two-bedroom condominium with a mountainside <laughs> view. Um, it's just, it's absolutely absurd. And I've noticed, by the way, that since these regulations went in, uh, came into effect, I believe last year, maybe the year before, the quality of the eggs has actually gone down. Uh, mm. the yolk sizes, sometimes they're this, sometimes they're big. It's just, you never know what you're going to get when you crack open an egg. Thank you, big government. Uh, what I do know what we're going to get from Harris, Scott, whether or not it's actual price controls, more government, more spending, more regulation is going to be the solution to every problem that was created by more regulation and more spending. 
So, Bill Whittle, it occurs to me that this is also kind of a political genius move in the sense that even if you don't do it, um, telling people that you're going to do something about the most common indicators that they see of how the economy is going. We've talked before here about how uh, gasoline is an interesting market because as you drive down the street, everybody's advertising their prices and you know immediately whether you'll get cheaper gas on one side of the street or the other and the gas is essentially gonna be the same, so who cares? Um, it's similar in groceries because you go there, you do it on a regular basis, you see those prices on little signs right on the products themselves and so, uh, People have a feel for how an economy is going many times by how those publicly advertised prices seem to be trending one way or the other. And they get that readout. I can remember back in the 1970s during the double digit inflation of the Carter years when my grandmother would have this you know, receipt from the Acme supermarket uh, and all of a sudden we were in triple digits of weekly grocery spending um, and it was just shocking for them. Uh, do you think that uh, Kamala Harris is essentially a political genius for introducing this as a, <laughs> no. as a campaign slogan, basically? <laughs> well, as you know, uh, the reason that these uh, farmers and grocers are, are gouging the prices is because back in 2020, a, a consortium of farmers and grocers got together and printed up about $2 trillion and injected it into, <sighs> the, um, into the United States economy. And that's what that's what drove these uh, high prices is the, the farmers and the, and the grocers, mm. especially, you know, the mom and pop grocery stores. Those were the big transgressors when it came to pumping, you know, trillions of dollars into the economy. Um, this is really I, I love hearing stories like this because it makes me realize just like the selection of Tim Waltz is that no matter no matter how much I worry that these people are going to take a centrist Tack on things in order to get elected, and then bring in their their uh, their their miserable commie ideology. They are so isolated from what actual people think that they think this is a good idea. Um, Bill, I saw have Kamala Harris and Tim Walls in a grocery store in Pennsylvania. They were they had pictures taken of them in the grocery store. Are you saying they're out of touch? Oh, but Scott, hang on. Let me interrupt for a sec. They kicked all the customers out and brought in actors to interact <laughs> with Harris no. and Walls on that in that grocery store scene. Every, Have you priced arugula lately? <laughs> um, Belgian on. Mm. No, pe people people feel as, at least I do. I think most people feel a certain affection towards their grocery store. Uh, a lot of what I wanted to say was covered by Steve, but you know, you have a choice of grocery stores and you find one that you like yeah. and as Steve pointed out, you buy your food here. This is where I buy my food. Um and of all of the sectors of the economy that, that seem to me to be immune from price gouging, uh, grocery stores and, and food seem to be like the bottom of the list. If she was talking about going after big oil or big pharma or anything like that, you would have, you would have a, a lot of people who don't know anything about big oil or big pharma. You know, they don't interact with these kind of things. But, but your grocery store, I mean, these people, these are people you see all the time at checkout girls and all the rest of this stuff. It, it's a little hard to believe that these, that these people are, are, um, are, are gouging prices. The reason that they went after uh, farmers, uh, grocers, is because, as you said, it is the single most visible indication of inflation. It is the one thing that people have to buy most often and shows. Uh, by the way, it's not something they have to buy most often. It's something that they buy regularly. And since they have to buy food regularly and have been buying food regularly for 40 years, they know what eggs used to cost and milk used to cost compared to what it, what it costs now. Uh, you don't go to the theater or movie theater as often as that. They don't raise prices as often as that. So, so there's no hiding from the fact that these prices in some cases have, have practically doubled. There's no hiding from it. And Harris can't blame it on the previous administration. So they're in a bind. And this is the one. Uh, this is the one way they thought that they could get out of it. So if they want to, if they want to say that the economy has been ruined by those by those demonic geniuses at Piggly Wiggly, if they want to go down that road and, and make this the hill that they're going to fight on, then I say great. But but not only is there no evidence for it, I, I really do think they're they're just taking a hatchet to their own feet in terms of the worst possible target they could have picked if they wanted to go down this price gouging road. 
Well, I think part of uh, the the political calculus here is uh, the Harris Walls campaign is counting on people not understanding what Steve Green said a couple of minutes ago, which is that inflation is a monetary phenomenon. And it is really hard to understand if you're not into economics or you haven't really even studied the foundations of it, why all of a sudden the same dozen eggs you bought uh, six weeks ago at one price are now at such a higher price. Um, and the temptation is to blame those people who are at the, at the end of that pipeline uh, without taking into account all of the other indicators or all the other influences that happen along the way, primary of which is the fact that the dollar is being devalued by the printing of money. And so everything gets more expensive. Uh, people like it when that happens and their paycheck goes up, and then they wonder mm -hmm. why at the same time the products that they buy with that paycheck is going up as well. Um, what they're talking about here is not direct price controls, but, but de facto price controls. And the reason it's not direct is because they're just saying something like, here's what would happen. Let's say uh, Kroger and Albertsons are, are successful in merging. Well, now, of course, they're big grocer, um, <laughs> notorious BG. And they are um, they're <laughs> being accused now of being some sort of big collusion uh, uh, that is controlling pricing in a particular market. The problem is most grocery items are widely available through many outlets, even in markets that have large conglomerate grocery stores. And you can get a price advantage for a brief period of time. You can jack up your price on something, but that sends a signal. Prices are information and prices send a signal to markets and producers to say, here is opportunity. And so when you see somebody selling a, a, a head of broccoli for $6 and you know that you can sell that same head of broccoli for $5, then you enter into that marketplace and find ways to advertise that. And you'll see a constant battle going on among grocery stores saying, we can do it cheaper here, we can do it cheaper here. Um, and so, but what they're going to do is, what the government will do is say, we're going to sue you for price gouging. Now, like a lot of lawsuits, it doesn't matter whether they ever prove price gouging or whether it ever gets to court. What matters is your name appears in the headlines and the federal government is suing you. The Harris administration <laughs> is suing Ugh. you for price gouging. And that sends a signal to customers that says, oh, wait a minute, your grocery store might be price gouging. The government says the grocery store is price gouging. Uh, maybe we should be a lot more careful about where we shop. And so now you've got a PR problem. And from what I've seen in the early comments from the grocery industry and other related industries in, re in reaction to what Kamala Harris is saying is they are ill prepared to deal with this onslaught. They don't know how to talk to people. They don't know how to, to speak in everyday language. They speak in abstractions and they say things like I heard, uh, you know, uh, House Leader uh, Mike Johnson saying that they, they've been gaslighting these people. And I'm like, come on, man, don't use the term gaslighting. You're, you're referencing like a 1930s or 40s movie that you then have to define <laughs> for people. Speak in plain language. And so I, I don't see anybody in the grocery industry that are capable of resisting this. So they're going to have a PR problem on their hands. Their reaction is going to be to say, you know what, we'll go along to get along because we certainly don't want to go to court with the government over our pricing here. So we'll reduce the pricing in this area and try to make it up somewhere else and, uh, and get out from under these charges. The government can use its muscle to push these companies around and to make you feel like they're really doing something, but it's the government that's driving up the price at the grocery store. And they are trying to shift the focus and shift the blame onto somebody else. And the Biden-Harris administration has been doing this for a long time. So uh, I, I don't think that this is actually something that will ever get through Congress. However, you don't need it to. You just need the threat. You just need to, to propose lawfare against private business. None of the private businesses or industry groups that I saw quoted were willing to boldly say, Harris is wrong. 
Instead, they were equivocating and mincing words and dancing around it and saying, we try to give the best value to our customers every day and we're certainly not price gouging. It was like, oh, great. You just put your name in the same sentence with the phrase price gouging. Yeah. So, you know, it, they, they don't know how to deal with that. They're going to back away and prices will come down marginally in some areas as the grocers try to stay out of the political spotlight. And that will be victory for Kamala Harris whether she gets this legislation through if she should become president or not. I think it is actually a smart political move, but it's a stupid economic move that, go, that is another reason that beyond a shadow of a doubt, Kamala Harris is not prepared to be president of the United States. For Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making Right Angle possible.